Hello everyone. In today's video, actually, we are going to cover the part related to ArcGIS maps in Power BI. And as you can see, this is the comparison between the different maps which we are going to cover in, in three different videos. First, in the previous video, we covered already Power BI standard map. Today, we are going to cover ArcGIS part. And this is, here is a comparison. Uh, just to highlight the first two points, this one, street maps and other maps, just, just highlighting the functionality that is being supported by ArcGIS. Second one for the customized legend, already covered in the Power BI standard map. So if you would like to know how this can be done, you can refer to the previous video. So in today's video, we are going to cover the related parts, remaining those from static range control till excluding points from the map. So let me explore the data where we are going to use today especially that we are going to cover heat map coverage map and so on so let me show you what we have we have two different sheets the first one called 4gdt as you can see in the top right here and this is including longitude latitude and this is rsrv this is can be in your coverage map where we are going to have a different colors and i have split this into ranges uh, and also i have in the previous video in power bi standard map explained how you can do that using dax formula or even within the table itself so this is the first table where we are going to use it for the coverage map for this points table, for that part, we are going to use it for the heat map creation, where we have still the longitude, long, longitude and latitude, and just like one metric called latency. So let's move forward and see what we have in today. Thank you very much. So now this is Arc, ArcGIS. The first part we're going to start with is again the coverage as we have done in the last previous one. So the ArcGIS actually can be created from here, from this ArcGIS map. So I will just click it here now. It's coming now. Again, we'll start using. You can see, like this one, you can have even an account with Arc Enterprise or whatever, and if you can sign in if you have ArcGIS online, and this can give you more functionality. But for now, I'm not going to use that. So now I would like to use the same data, data set, which is latent view for GD data. I'll again, see see here, this is how it looks like: location, size, color, time, tool tips, having even more more things here. So, but if you click here, it's, it's almost like have few things. Anyway, let's start one by one. So, drag and drop let, longitude, lot, latitude here. Now, the, the here it's being now dropped here, right? So, the color we already explained how to to create it. We added additional column, correct? So, this a, a, additional column is called RSRB ranges. So, you can drag and drop it here. Once you drag and drop it here, see it's starting giving some colors now, but it's not really looking into the like this, right? So first of all, let's let me give you like before going to the controlling the Tara, let's go take it one by one. How first to, to change the street maps here? If you click into this particular icon here above here, and you move then to this, for example, you will find some options and also here and also here. Okay, there is one option missing here. So first of all, you need to make sure that all your options are being covered. So you need to go to format your visual. You have layer control. It's already on. This one usually by default is off. If it's off, you can see there is something missing here. And this is map tools. There is a zoom tool. Let's click this one to enable it. Base map. This is what I'm looking for. See, once you click here, now it's coming at this one. So now let's do like that. This is in case if you want to change the base map. For example, you want to make it open street, so you need to click here. First, you need to enable it, then you want to click here, then, for example, change it to open street map like that. So now it's giving, like, as you can see here now. So let's now click this one. So this was the first part for the street maps. Now, the customized legend already covered in the previous, it will be exactly the same. You need just to do ex exactly the same thing. Now about the ranges control, like uh, ranges control, actually, this is also for the exact Excel. You can just increase the ranges or based on the formula. And the customization already done. So now let's see how to format this one to keep it exactly the same as this. So you have here different options. You can just go, for example, for this area, which is called view a list on the map. Okay. As a, again, on this part, it will not be enabled by default. You need to go to the, the map layers and enable this part. Once you enable this part, you have the three dots here. Layer options, you need to click it. This for a swan symbology. Once you click it, actually, if you didn't drag and drop from the beginning, the colors here, this part will not be appear. Just take sure of this, make sure that once you, I drag on this one without that, if you remove this now, this one, see, it's not here anymore. So take care of this part. So I will drag and drop it again. And now let's modify. 
see now we have three options heat map location if there is no colors it will be like that so i need to click here style options and then with style options now i have this particular area which is showing my colors so initially i would like first to change the color so i will just click here i would like to fill it with green okay now we are done with the green outline i don't need any outline so i'll just close okay this is the first color so let's go back now the first one is being done here but you can see it's very big because i didn't reduce uh, the sample size but it's okay so let's click here again go to the remaining option you can even change it to circle whatever you want and even have another shape so it's the size first let's make it three for example so now i will click ok now it's done see it's reducing a lot now now change this one to yellow again you can get here you have the fill make it into yellow once you make it yellow again close this one and go back to the shape and change the size again to three so you need to do it one by one for the legend you give it so the last one will be uh, again fill i will just give it as red color again here outline i will switch off the outline and again i will give it as three so you can control as this one whatever you need so now see if you went uh, down here see now we have it uh, same as this one the only difference is that the color is kind of i give another color and the size of the bins is is smaller actually so this is the first option here i would like also to show some options that this one actually the can be changed as if you click into symbology you can also change for example the coloring here it's like the way it's this is a standard in case if you would, you would like to use something of their own legend okay so this one will give a legend based on the, your selection so you can do it manually or even you can do it as we just have shown here and in case if there is other you can just hide it from here so this is the first part of how to control the colors for this part now let's go through the second part which is related to the heat map okay let's relate it to the heat map draw draw again the same map which is arcgis it's here as you can see for bar bi then i will be using another data set now which is for the points okay so the points you can just drag and drop so you need first to take the latency sorry latitude to latitude on longitude to longitude for now let's keep it like that for now and see what we can get so now this is all the points again so directly you can first go to here expand map and again because i close it off you need to make sure that everything is enabled layers is enabled and also map tools you can also add it again and just make sure everything is there here right so again you need to click here which is called view then you can just click layer options you have the symbology here if you click it again you'll find that you have this kind of heat map and also this location single example so let's go to single location just show you what what it has this is just simple one it's just showing you like if you want to change the shape also the color same of what you have for this particular point for example i don't want outline so you see this outline uh, white one it's disappear and this is in case you won't like to change the color for example to blue so you'll find the dots is being changed and again you can change the size of those for example by make it uh, five so you find that these dots will now be reducing inside this map if i change it to five or whatever yeah no sorry this is a transparency for the the colors but the size will be from here so if i make it five now this is supposed to reduce now outside okay, let's make it two also to, to be more clear See now it's reduced a lot outside here. So this is just to see you how to can control. Now in case if you want to turn it into heat map, you just need to click into the heat map here. And now into the heat map, it's yeah, you can just make style option. Now this is the main point. The style map actually is giving you standard colors. You cannot control the color. This is one of a small limitation which you have in this part that the color itself they are giving you standard colors so you cannot like give a specific colors you like it. you just need to go through their own colors which we, they are giving to you here so now see this is how you can control this part as you can see outside here like let's make it big and like, to make it more clear for everyone see for example now i make it like this see what will happen yeah so this is how the one way around if you would like to control your color so now see okay giving more advantage for the yellow because i'm using yellow so 
this is also area of influence as you can see and the color ramp can be again changed from here or there or whatever so yeah this is actually straightforward but also let me show you something here if you go down more down here this is the area radius like how much you want to increase or reduce or whatever see this is the radius of the dots like for example if you increase the radius it will aggregate more areas so if you make it like for example you find that like this is not very clear so yeah this is how you increase it now let's check like does it have also same thing as metric so i think yes if you drag and drop the latency here into the size let's try to see what will happen i will go again to the heat map and let's change the control again make it for example again like this see now let's make it average this is also one of the issues that every time you are changing this one it will again ask you again and again to change but this is in case you would like to control it using your a specified metric but this is also one of the drawbacks of this map if you click here now see it will again go back to the normal one and again you need to go on the changes so this is also one of the other points which i would like to highlight to you so this is actually how you can quickly create a heat map using this arcgis it's more flexible in terms of zooming like zooming it will not directly disappear as the previous one as this one it will just state you still have a chance to see your data when you zoom in not compared to the other one the other one which is a standard map it was disappearing quickly so this is also one of the advantage which you have it here yeah, so this is actually options if you want to look the extent and so on and so on. This is the location type you want. But this options, usually it's not, not like the standard map. All the things can, can be changed from here. You can control most of their inputs from here. And I will go through the remaining stuff now. So now let's speak about the clustering point of view. If you want to like to, to make clustering, what it means by clustering? Okay, first of all, let me return this one again to two points. Okay. So now let's cover the clustering bar. So let me first make it full screen to try to show it like a more clear vision when, whenever, whenever you are working now. So I already have the map. I drag and drop latitude and longitude for now. So what is the idea of clustering? Clustering, for example, if you would like to try to cluster some of the points into one, one area and just, for example, check a particular metrics, which is, for example, latency. So I would like to make a cluster for these four points and check what is the overall average or sum or count based on the aggregation you are giving for this metric for, for example for this latency or for any other metric for example total sales or whatever so i click and do this in size for now and let's see before then doing that let's first go to the clustering ones how to do clustering in general so you need to click here and do this part again then the three dots once you did the three dots you have the clustering second one once you did the clustering, you just need to enable it. And this can be controlled. See now, once I done, I done that, we'll find that number of points is being reduced. See? It will even give you a count. If you click this one here, I see you that this cluster represents seven features. It means it's like aggregated seven points inside this one. But it's not giving anything here inside as information, only telling you that this cluster having seven values. So if I drag and drop the latency now here into the size, Okay, or better to put it into the tooltips. Okay, put it into the tooltips tool and again, like a cluster now. See now what we'll have. This cluster represent browse features. So now drag and drop, you have the cluster, uh, drag and drop the latency, for example, into the size, but the main point that it will be disabled again, so we need to enable it. So I will enable it again now. See now. If you click into that part now, it will give you this. This cluster represents seven features. The average value of the, of the latency within this cluster is 401. Actually, it's this is not the average, it's the sum based on your aggregation, but it's telling you at the end the average. So, it's telling the self change this value I'm expecting inside here to average. It will still saying average, but the value itself will change. If you look into this now again, let's make it calculated first before we give anything. See, before it was 400, now it's changed to 152 because I make I change aggregation to average. So this is, can be done for it. So this is like, it's still using the all the cluster, but I need to make it like this. Now enable it. So in case if you would like to increase, for example, the cluster radius to increase the more points, the dots will be increasing, but you can see the count of samples here is increasing. So this one having eight and it's on. Let's make it to the maximum and see what will happen. 
see now the dots reduced a lot so if you click into this because it's all being aggregated now average latency for example is 154 and in case if you would like to change it to for example squares you can just go back here see here it's giving just some information that uh, giving you like the size see the number of features you have this will be size if it's greater than 21 16 and so on this is like something you can also play around you can see like from here as just a reference so now just i would like to change this kind of single points the this points uh, the the small into squares instead of having yeah into squares why uh, this is like in case if you would like to have a continuous uh, check like to merge it all together so i need to go back to the cluster region to make sure it's still on it's still on so now if i make like that see now zooming out it will looks like they are now clustering all together but again it's not really very uh, symmetric or compared to the bar bi uh, sorry compared to the qgis or uh, or maybe but this is a, a way around we can do it as a clustering point of view and even you can give it different colors using whatever you have if in case you have a colors you can just drop it and drag it here so to give different colors for the ranges here which have in the class so one of the the function which you have it in general in this map so let's now check this kind of related points for the point selection as we have shown before and even if you want to exclude some points so for example assume you want to exclude this particular area so you can click here so this is like giving you more function for the flexibility of selection for example the previous map was showing only squares right this one now can be or rectangles as like can be circles can be rectangle can even be a polygon selection if you click here freehand selection or even polygon selection so let's first take this one as this one for example is rectangle what see what we'll get you just need to click shift okay you need to click shift then move your mouse so if you click now here you can even exclude this one from here as we have done before see now the voice has been excluded and again it will be coming into the filter so this is actually having more uh, more sophisticated type way of selection you can just make it as as we mentioned based on polygon for example here so you can even close this one so if you have this still says selection of uh, I just mean make it as a polygon for example I will make it like this then I will give as a polygon so now you can just draw your polygon here like this is also one way around now it's being selected you can still execute for example all these points see now it's being executed as well now going back here so you can remove it so this is actually one of the things also okay now let me show you the interested part about this map as well which actually information you can get it from it's being uploaded in the public web for example if you have postal codes is being uploaded you can search you might find some interesting information so let me for example give you a, a, a here some example about this part so you need to get, to go here for this particular area this one okay which is add context to your data to enhance its meaning okay so now if you look into this part you can add even some reference layers and this is like if it's being uploaded to the web or even uploaded especially to ArcGIS and you make it public, someone having ArcGIS on uh, account. So if you want to this part, for example, the first part you need to, I'm zooming in this particular map. So the first part you need to go to the filters. In the filters, you need search within the map. So now once I give any search, if you click first, like see, it's giving you 10,000 items here. So for example, in this area, let's call it, for example, called Mecca, this area, okay? If I click Mecca, See, it will give you some information here about this area. So this is, people have uploaded this file by, by themselves. So if you have an account, you can do the same. So you can, for example, click here to see what kind of information you have. If you click here in this part, see now it's just showing you that this area will be highlighted. Someone created this polygon and it's created by, this is by name, the owner, and this is the date so it's being created and this is public actually. So if you make add to the map, see now, it's coming as as you have seen now it's coming like this increasing this one so this actually can even find for many countries the postal codes or the zip codes depend on the area so if someone is uploading you can find it and if you want to confirm the information you can just click here and show you for example this is not for our area this is for different areas so this is also one of the interested things in this particular map
And now let's move to the third map. And also there is more other options, but I just try to cover what we really need. But there is a limitation about that. For example, if you want to import the sectors or the sites or the sectors and so on, this is also not like uh, applicable. Uh, I think it might be done as ArcGIS as well, but I didn't try it. But it doesn't have a direct way to do it, to import the sites.